folks, Rich here at RC Informer. Today I have a quick review video of the Dynamite Passport Ultra Force Duo 400 watt dual AC and DC touch charger. Um, I have a need for charging a lot of batteries at the same time, so having a single charger to charge only one thing, one battery at a time, uh, doesn't really help me out. So I need, need at least dual ch channels, and uh, also I need that ability to do DC and AC. It's kind of tough to find a, a, a powerful package that's all in one, uh, and this thing uh, fits the bill. It charges one to six cells. Uh, I do a lot of three, four, and six cell uh, batteries mostly, and I'm taking sometimes uh, five, 10, 15 airplanes to the field at the same time, and I need a lot of charging power. And again, it's very hard to find something that'll do both AC and DC that's in one package. A lot of times you have DC chargers, which I have a lot of, that you need a separate power supply that's a lot of equipment. So it's kind of nice just to have everything all in one, and it's powerful enough to do at least two batteries. Uh, again, either AC uh, or DC. Now, a couple things to note on this thing, with this one anyway, includes a, uh, a free uh, LiPo charge protection bag, which is kind of nice. Five year warranty, again, AC, DC, two batteries at the same time, uh, 200 watts uh, per channel. Multi chemistry batteries, of course, different kinds, and uh, although I'll mostly be doing LiPos with it. And a touch screen. Again, I heard at the bottom some of the specs on it. 10 amp current rating, multi chemistry, you can charge any batteries. Also has USB on it, guys, so if you got your phone out there and you need to charge something to your phone, which my phone's dying all the time when I'm out there, so it's kind of nice to have that input, which you can see uh, kind of right there. It also has a uh, temp controllers there and, uh, and so forth. So you can charge your phone at 2.1 amps right there, guys, while you're, uh, while you're sitting there flying and doing things. Um, again, touchscreen, multi-channel, multi-processor controlled. And uh, again, AC, DC all the way around. There's a big list there, guys, detail all the specs on this thing. And uh, just a real nice charger all the way around. You can see that touch screen. We'll get in there and look closer to everything. You also get along with this thing is quite a uh, gambit of uh, wires, as you can see here, for charging everything. Um, and again, here's just a quick picture. It shows you that uh, USB charge port. So I'm going to be using this a lot because it's kind of nice. To have something to like charge your phone with, you know, like kind of like right there while you're out at the field, uh, while you're flying planes, that thing can be charging. Anyway, guys, let's get this out of the box and see what's inside. As we take this thing out of the box, guys, you can see it comes out pretty nicely. Oops, I just messed up that foam there. Let's see, we'll pull this thing open, and you can see everything's nicely packed. Here's the uh, free charge bag that you get with this thing. Uh, you got uh, instruction manuals, which actually they sent me. Looks like four or five instruction manuals. That was probably just sort of a mistake. Uh, and then you have the charger itself, which is uh, really nice here, guys. And then you got all of these uh, charge adapters and balance adapters and everything. And uh, you can kind of get an idea of uh, how this looks. They got nice uh, protective screen covers over those touch screens. But a very rugged, very robust uh, charger. You can see here where you plug in your, all the cooling fans and you plug in your power cord right here, your on off switch. And then uh, lots of cooling panels and holes and stuff under there and uh, gives you all the uh, all the specs on the underside and the power output. Uh, the input is an 11 to 18 uh, and uh, let's see that's a DC input, AC input of course you just plug that in the wall and uh, anyway as we go around the sides of this thing you can see your DC uh, power cables uh, there, your attachments for DC power. This is mostly intended as an AC but uh, again, you can, you can plug this into a, uh, a DC source, like into a car battery or something, but you do need to get some cables for that. For some reason in the box here, they don't include those cables, and I'm not really sure why. I'll throw a picture up here so you can kind of see uh, what those look like. There is a uh, power cord, which I think they should have supplied with this, but they didn't. But there is a cord here you can see where it's got alligator clips and so forth on there that you can just uh, plug those right in, and then you can connect it to a battery. Um, these things, guys, are either PA, if you, if you don't want to get the cord, uh, they, these are called either PA75s or PA45s. I'm not sure the type of connectors these are, but you can always get those connectors and make your own lead if you do want to plug this thing into a battery uh, and charge it. So anyway, guys, uh, cooling fans on this side as well, and uh, overall, really nice, guys. You can see your, your adapters here where you plug in your charge cord, your balance sockets here. Uh, optional temperature sensors, USB ports here, and uh, also again your uh, USB sort of charging. 2.1 amps, 5 volts, so you can really charge almost anything uh, at the field. Now let's go ahead and plug this thing in and uh, let's see how the thing uh, works.
Once you have the dynamite charger uh, plugged in, you're ready to uh, go ahead and uh, turn it on. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit on the screen and show you something. As I power this on, you're going to see I put my RC Informer logo in here, so you can kind of personalize it here just a little bit. We'll go ahead and turn that on. See right there, I'll show you where that setting is and uh, where you can change it. Now, one thing I noticed is um, with that fan running when you're charging batteries, this thing is a little bit loud, but you know what? That's actually a good thing because it means all the uh, the fans are running and uh, and so forth. And you can see all the menus here. Now, a couple things I want to point out. Uh, they give you a good supply. They give you two balance uh, adapters, which are really pretty nice, and you can just plug those things right in. And then they give you um, uh, two of these uh, XT60 uh, connectors. Uh, they give you two EC3s. Uh, they give you one uh, sort of T-style or Dean's type connector. Uh, they also give you um, one of these for really charging nickel metal or, uh, or uh, NICAD batteries and so forth. And the nice thing about these things is they have these really nice uh, insulated connectors. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to zoom in on this thing and show you exactly how these things plug in. You simply just pull this thing up and you plug these things in their position right where you want them uh, and they go right in. And, uh, you don't have to use uh, this particular type. In fact, what they did nicely is they actually designed this thing to kind of use, you know, your standard charge leads. This is one that I have, one of these kind of squid types that uh, will charge multiple different types. And the beauty is, is they designed this so you can use all of your own charging leads as well. So uh, if they don't include one with this thing that you don't use, it's not a big deal you can use your uh, own charge lead. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug this all up pretty much the way that I use it. And the way I have it set up right here, guys, is I have all these multi-connectors because I'm going to show you guys how this thing charges with some EC5s and these Connexus 7000 milliamp six cell packs. And uh, all you have to do is just get everything plugged in, guys. Get your, uh, get your uh, leads plugged in, get your balance ports plugged in. These are nice because they actually put a little bit, a little locking mechanism on them, which is kind of cool. So that locks these in position, and it's kind of nice. You don't have to buy a whole bunch of extra stuff for this. It really comes with everything you need. I like the arrangement that you can put your batteries down here, kind of as you're charging this thing. And also, just as advertised, guys, I went ahead and I plugged in a USB cord in here that you can see. And uh, I'm going to go ahead while we're doing this. I'm going to charge my, uh, my cell phone and let that thing get all boosted up. And that's another nice feature is while you're at the field charging again, you can charge your, uh, your cell phone right there while you're working. Now one thing I want to note before I get into too much of the programming of this thing, as you can see all these uh, all these connections down here, one of the things I read, you have an optional temperature sensor so you can sense, you can uh, kind of uh, evaluate and monitor your uh, battery temperature as you're charging. I don't really do that too much, um, but you can put that in if you want. Uh, these USB ports, they are not for charging. What they're for actually um, is for software updates only, so they're not really for charging anything. So really all you have is your charge uh, ports here, your balance ports, temperature sensor, and your, uh, your USB charger. So with that, guys, we will go ahead and get into the menus. The menus on the Dynamite chargers are really easy to use, guys, and uh, I found that the uh, touchscreen works uh, really well. One thing I've noticed as I've been using it here is, is that uh, for most selections, guys, it works fine just to use your finger for things. Um, but there are some selections, mostly in the setup menu, where uh, the lines are very of selection are very close together. And it really helps to have you know, some sort of a, uh, a stylus like I'm using right here, where it will allow you to really finely tune and finely select some of the lines. And uh, as you're going to see here in this uh, video here, I'm going to shoot. So right after, power, right after powering up this thing, you get right to the uh, very first menu. It defaults right here to the uh, LiPo menu, which is pretty much what most of us are going to be using. And up in the upper right-hand corner, it shows you what menu that you are actually in. You can see it says LiPo right there as well. And as we go side to side with these arrows, starting with the right, it goes to memory, which there's a whole bunch of memories. We'll get into that. Uh, the view menu, and again up here in the upper right-hand corner, it shows you what menu you're in. Uh, the setup menu, a lot of parameters there. Um, then it goes into lead acid batteries, uh, NICAD batteries, nickel metal hydride batteries, uh, lithium high voltage, lithium ion, uh, and lithium ferrite. And then, of course, it defaults, goes right back to the beginning menu of LiPos, guys. So, because that's pretty much probably what we're going to be using the most. Again, I'll go ahead and select uh, charge right here. We can get into that menu first. And you can see I already put some parameters in here and so forth, how this thing was set up. Um, the pack voltage here, uh, you basically just select a line uh, that you want. And um, you can actually 
uh, use your up and down arrow buttons as well to kind of go up and down and select what you want. So once you get to where you want, you press select and you go ahead and you uh, can change the value of that. You can see it was at six cell, I'm going all the way down to one. And uh, it's that simple to adjust it. And again, I already put some parameters in here. Six cell, 7,000 milliamp, I max this baby out at 10 amps because we're gonna put this thing to a full test with two six cell 7,000 milliamp Conexus packs and we're gonna see what it does. Uh, you can set your end voltage here as well, 4.2 for example, and, um, and uh, you can reduce that as well. But 4.2 is where you want it because you want the, the, the thing to max out and charge. Now when you're getting ready to charge this thing, you're going to take your finger, your stylus, you're going to go on charge or press or hold. Basically this bottom line, you're going to hold it down, okay, and that's going to start the charging process. So uh, before we go into that, I'm going to show you the other menus and then we'll get that going. Uh, I set both sides of the charger, and again, both of these sides, guys, uh, both sides of this work exactly the same. They're both set up uh, to, to charge two separate batteries uh, with exactly, uh, in exactly the, uh, the same method. So uh, both the menus work the same. We'll go to back, and then we'll go here into, I you know, went too far. We'll go to the next menu, which is uh, memory, and we'll click on that. You can see here, there's actually 20 memories, and you can actually just, whatever you're not sure about, just press on it, and it usually works. You can see here, I'm going to go to two, three, four. So there's actually four screens with 20 memories that let you delete, load, and save uh, some of these uh, memories. And so since this is number one, I'm going to try this. I actually haven't tried this yet. Uh, okay, we've got the first one t set uh, as a 6S, and it's a 10 amp charge. So that's already saved in memory, which is nice. So again, you can program 20 memories in there. Next menu here, guys, uh, is going to be the, uh, the view. So let's uh, take a look at what the view gives us. Uh, it looks like it shows us what the uh, input voltage is currently, output voltage, uh, the internal temperature of this thing, resistance, and temperature sensor, which it says there's no, no sensor there. Uh, let's see what cell says. Cells gives us a readout of each of the individual cells. I'm not sure what res is. Let's click on that. Uh, obviously, that shows us the resistance. That's what that is, the internal resistance of the batteries and uh, it tells you what each one of them is uh, reading. We can hit the back button and go back, and again, that takes us back to the main menu. So as you can see here, guys, very simple to use. Next menu is the setup. I think there's a bunch of stuff here. You can see up in the upper right corner, which is usually the place to default to go to, um, you're looking at, uh, again, one through four pages. So you can scroll through those. Uh, as I select the next line, um, you can select it, and then you can select, do you want Fahrenheit, uh, or do you want Celsius? I'm gonna leave that on Fahrenheit, because well, that's just how I like to roll. So we're going to do that, and then uh, let's see. Cutoff temperature, um, input low voltage, um, and then input limited, auto. There's a lot of menus here, guys. Honestly, I don't know what all this stuff is. There is a discharge mode as well that you can select. Uh, CC, there's a, here we go back to that. We'll select that. There is uh, CC, and then there's CV. Honestly, I'm not sure what those two mean. mean. I do have to get in the instruction manual and check out the two of those. Uh, and I, I, and, and uh, I'll probably do that at a later time. Uh, you can see here balance voltage, guys, is in auto. Balance force, full force auto. So again, a lot of things to set here. There's a safety timer of 240 minutes. You could adjust that. Obviously, if the charger keeps charging, you could set a time for which it will stop charging so it doesn't, you know, cause any problems. A lot of little setup menus here like, uh, like uh, backlight. You can see I can reduce that. It defaults at 100%, so it's nice and bright, but if you don't need all that, you don't need it. Melodies you can change. I don't know if you guys can hear that. So anyway, you can go ahead and change those. You could turn the sound off for the buttons. You can turn the sound off for the buzzers. You can adjust the, uh, the volumes and so forth. So a lot of like initial setup, a lot of stuff in the setup menu. And then here's where your, uh, your initial username and stuff is. And you can see the version of your software. Again, this is software upgradable. So as updates come out for this thing, um, you know, obviously you can get updates uh, online and so forth. So you could select your lines. Like you see here, I typed in RC Informer and I put that in the main menu just so I can kind of personalize it a little bit. Now, if you want a factory reset, you press and hold on this bottom line right here and it'll reset everything back to standard. So if things get messed up and you're not sure what's going on with them, uh, that's where you just kind of reset everything and sort of start scratched over again. Um, Anyway, guys, uh, here you got your lead acid, all your setups for that. Uh, you go, which I, I don't know if I'll do too much charging that. NICADs, I might do some nickel metal hydride charging because, and of course, there's a discharge menu, a cycle menu, all kinds of different menus for this. Um, uh, and then you can set your capacity, your current, 
uh, your delta peak, all that kind of stuff. You press it and hold it and it starts charging. So if you guys have receiver packs, you guys still have nickel metal, which I use. I'll probably use this a bit to charge some batteries. And then again, lithium high voltage. You go into the charge menu and you set up everything. So that's really about it, guys. The menus are pretty simple. Mostly it's the initial setup and then these individual uh, different uh, menus that you're going to get to uh, uh, that you charge everything with. Now, while we're on lithium polymer, I'm going to go ahead and set everything up to charge here, guys. And as you can see, between the uh, two of these things, I'm going to move this thing over a little bit. We're going to get right onto the two of these things. Let me kind of zoom in there a little bit. And I'm going to, we're going to do a test here, guys, as you can see from the batteries I have. I'm running two of these, uh, I'm going to be charging two of these 6S 7,000 milliamp 30C Connexus packs. I run these in the uh, FMS um, A10 uh, Warthog, the new airplane. These will fit in most all the FMS Warbirds and anything that's 6 cell because the pack's really not all that big. Uh, but you got 7,000 milliamps to play with. This is probably also what we're going to be using in the brand new FMS uh, F7F Tiger Cat that's going to be showing up here very soon. And uh, we're going to be using that as well to get a little bit more flight time out of the airplane. But here we go, guys. We are going to test this baby out. You can see here, I got both of these set up at uh, 6 cell, 7,000 milliamp, and 10 amps, guys. I'm going to try charging both of these at 10 amps. Let's see what happens, guys, because that is the true test of one of these kinds of chargers is how big of a battery and how big of a battery, how big of a capacity can I charge uh, and charge two at the same time and get away with it. Remember, this is running off the AC system, so we'll see what it does with uh, AC power. And to get this thing up and rolling, all you have to do is just uh, get everything set up just the way you want it. We're going to press and we're going to hold the charge here, and we're going to let it go. We're going to press and hold, and we're going to charge on this one as well, and we're going to let it go. Let's see what it does. Now, I usually do this with new chargers to kind of find out what will they do, what will they handle. Now, you can see there's a limit of 8.4, 8.5 amps. It won't let it really go past uh, that many amps to charge this thing. So that's pretty good, guys, because most of us aren't charging anything more than a 5,000 milliamp uh, pack most of the time. Sometimes we're charging maybe six, and rarely actually even seven, although seven is what the norm is, is gonna be, and that's kind of what I'm gonna be charging most of mine at. So. Anyway, guys, for the purposes of, uh, of just kind of demoing this thing, guys, I am actually going to let this thing go and let it charge at maximum amps, okay, and, uh, and uh, at six cell, and we're going to come back and see how this thing uh, comes out when it's all done. All right, guys, we're about halfway into charging these batteries, and we're just going to take a quick look as the uh, progress here continues. Uh, as you can see here, We've put in about 3,600 uh, milliamps here. Uh, we've dropped down to about, about 7.9 amps, 7.6 on this side. And uh, here we're at 24.35 volts and 25.1. This battery actually, I think, uh, was a little bit more charged than this one. This one was a brand new one. Uh, but for the most part, they're the same battery. You can see everything's coming up. I'm going to press on unit here. Let's see what that does. You can see each of the cell voltages right here, and they have a little graphic display. See, this one's coming up a little faster. Uh, let's go back to res. You can look at the um, uh, internal resistance of each of these batteries and kind of see where they're at. We'll go back as well on both of these. Get back to the beginning. That one on the right looks like it's almost done. We'll go back again, and uh, we'll put, pull up the graph. There's a graph on both of these, so you can kind of see how close they are to maximum voltage and so forth. I don't know how much use this really gives you, but you can see the voltage here, the time they've been charged in about 30 minutes or so. And uh, this one's almost fully charged, so we're about uh, ready to, uh, to be done with these. So, but anyway, guys, just a quick look at the middle of, uh, the, around the middle of the charging, or almost towards the end anyway. As you can see here, guys, we've reached the end of the charging cycle. You can see both of these say that they are done. And they uh, flash charge, as you just saw prior when they are charging and they say done when they're done. I also noticed this arrow at the top that when you click on that, it uh, does go into a couple other of these parameters that you can kind of monitor, I think, as you're charging. So uh, anyway, as we go back here, you can see 62 minutes, 5,083 milliamps were put into this. This is a brand new battery. Uh, of course, zero current right now. It started at 8.4 and then tapered down to zero. Uh, voltage, 25.2, uh, so this is fully topped off resistance of uh, 52. And uh, let's see, 4.2 uh, volts per cell. 
and you can see the internal resistance on each of those as well. Graphical display shows the time. I'm pretty sure 62 minutes, 45 seconds is right at the end of that. And you can see how it charged up and then it tapered off and we're now at 25.2 uh, volts. So back to the beginning. Uh, similar on this, 54 minutes. Uh, this is an older battery, guys, I've used a lot. 4,077 uh, milliamps were put into this. Uh, of course, zero current now, 25.2, 54 ohms. I don't know why there's a rogue temperature in here because I don't have a temperature sensor set up. So, but anyway, we'll, uh, we'll kind of take that under advisement. Looks like everything, everything maxed out here at 4.2. And uh, let's see, internal resistance looks about the same on everything here. And then the graphical display, very similar to the other one. You see about 54 minutes is represented from about here to here. And you see where it charged and then it topped off and then it uh, went ahead and uh, got everything uh, all balanced. So really nice guys overall how this, uh, this thing charged. Now one other thing I want to try, now that we're fully charged on this, another feature that I use on a lot of these, uh, these things is um, uh, when I'm doing LiPos is their storage ability and how well these things will store. Now I haven't actually tried this yet so we're going to kind of see what this, uh, this thing does do. Now I'm going to see how high we can get the the discharge current. I'm going to just rev it all the way up and see what it goes to. 10 amps is probably not realistic. It's probably only going to go to maybe one amp or something, but that's actually what I want to test. I'm going to run this up to uh, 7,000 because that's what our battery is and we'll see what it says. Obviously when you go up to 7,000 milliamps it will uh, put seven amps in there. So, uh, And then the end storage and you can set that to whatever you want and um, and uh, you know, 3.85 is, is really a storage voltage. So once we have this set, I want to see now what this is going to do when I store it. Because sometimes I don't have my battery. Sometimes I fully charge. I don't even go fly. So I got to set this thing into storage mode. So we're going to press and hold this storage mode button here. We're going to let it see see what it does and what it'll discharge at. Which is actually one of the real important things that you want to look at. Um, looks like it's climbing up steadily. We're at 25.15 volts. That's probably a little bit erroneous, but I think it's going to top off at one amp is what it's going to do because most of these things will discharge at one amp, but let's see if it goes any higher than that. We'll see. Yeah, that's probably about it, which is good, and that's kind of what you want, and that's about the most you're going to get out of most of these chargers is about a one amp uh, uh, discharge on these things. You can hear that fan just kicked in, guys, and uh, this thing does make a lot of noise because it's got a lot of cooling fans on both sides, and that's good because it keeps it nice and cool. The charger barely even got, it got warm, but not too hot, even charging at a real high uh, rate like that. But anyway, uh, this one amp will get this thing uh, discharged and down at a really good storage level, and uh, that's good to know that it will discharge at one amp. So when you have a high capacity battery like this and you have to get it, uh, get it discharged, you can do a one amp discharge on this thing. So anyway, guys, overall, really nice charger. Uh, I will be getting this thing out to the field uh, just as soon as I can to be testing it out while I'm flying and filming. Uh, Joe Nall is about uh, a week or so away, guys. So I'm gonna be getting this out there and really charging the heck out of stuff at Joe Nall. So I'll probably report back on it after I get uh, a lot of charging done with it. but. Uh, uh, it seems to be a really nice charger. What I like about it is, is that everything kind of goes right through the front here and you can charge everything right through the front instead of having wires out both sides of the thing. Um, it's AC and DC, so you can charge both ways if you need to, depending on what you need. And it will charge two big packs at 8.4 amps, which that's the maximum. I only do that for demonstration purposes. Mostly I only charge at 1C. So with a seven th two 7,000 packs like this, guys, I would only want to charge seven amps here, seven amps here at the very most. And most of the time we're charging 5,000 milliamps. So five amps and five amps here. But that's the most important test on a charger like this is can it charge big batteries at one C or a little bit higher uh, and, and do that all day long, which it looks like this will. So overall guys, really nice package. It's all combined. You don't need a separate um, um, power um, um, supply, which is really nice. And the one of the reasons I like it, it's all in one unit and it'll charge two big batteries uh, uh, together. Now, again here guys, just as a quick overview, you get the balance port, uh, balance uh, adapters with it. You get uh, all of the, the adapters that you see right here, which are a, sort of a T-style Deans, two XT6s, two EC3s, and then your standard kind of, um, you know, kind of nickel metal or servo type lead so you can charge, uh, um, you know, receiver packs and that kind of stuff, nickel metal and NICAD and stuff. 
Uh, charge bag came with mine, which is nice. I don't use them too much, but uh, they get the job done. And uh, it's just a nice, complete, really thorough package. Also, guys, my phone is, uh, my phone is charged now. We're at 100%. So again, I'm loving that uh, USB function where you can just kind of charge everything right through here. Again, guys, you can use all your old balance adapters that have your typical uh, standard banana plugs. Uh, one more thing to note, guys, on the Conexus batteries, I'm using these 7,000 milliamp six cell packs. Again, in a lot of the FMS airplanes, they're pretty versatile. They're about 100 bucks, so the price is right for a lot of capacity like that. And you also notice here, too, one of them has this uh, shipping uh, 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 wire on it, and one doesn't. I actually removed the shipping wire, and I found out a way to do that. And that is going to be in an up and coming video, guys, that I'm going to make and put out and show you exactly how I remove that. Anyway, guys, uh, the Dynamite uh, Passport Ultra Force Duo. Really nice charger that you can get a lot of stuff done with and get big batteries charged with. Thanks for watching RC Informer, guys, and as always, we'll see you next time.